You know, Hugo Lanimer is not stupid. Meaning we are. That horse is out of the top drawer. Why did he sell it then? And to you, of all people? He's got a slight temperament problem, that's all. Oh, that sounds promising. Haven't you got any faith in your governor? I reckon he's probably good enough to get him gone. Only probably. But who do you know is going to fork out 35 grand for a crabby animal, even if he's top class? What's the matter with Danny's own? Doesn't like umping Danny about. Well, who would? Well, that two bagger last night, for one. <laughs> <laughs> All right, you lot. I pay you to work, not fanny about. And like I said, another six furlongs up the gallops. And come back in pairs at a nice, steady canter. That doesn't mean gallop, Danny. Welfare state's new here, so let him settle. OK, off you go. Well? You were going to tell me about this owner. Oh, yes, yeah. Brant said, I spotted Mike's promise and talent immediately and persuaded him to join this exciting new venture. Blah, blah, blah. Oh, and it's me here again at the end. We haven't got classic horses yet, but when we do, watch out. What about that? Must have been a slow day. Uh, Billy Dawson, please. You what? I'm sorry, I... I had a very bad day yesterday. I've no cash. He means it. Well, I'm afraid I do. Mike? Leave him to me. You two better get your thinking caps on. I never promised to buy him. I think Mike might just disagree. Well, what are you going to do? We're going back to the office to find another owner. It's the least you can do. All right, don't crow. Not in my nature. So plan B, then. B? Aye. B for Brandt. Gotta be worth a try. I'm not interested in other people's rejects. <laughs> no. Look, your job is to get Black Deed into the winner's enclosure. Newbury, Saturday. Oh, you're fussing. There's nothing wrong with the horse. Blood count's OK. So I say it should run. I am not going to argue the toss. Black Deed runs Saturday. But it's exactly what you said no, you wanted. I'll hold. You said that one day you might... What made you change your mind? I interrupted breakfast. Mistake? With my mother, fatal. Tim, it's Francis. I'm sorry to call you so early, but I've come up with something that might interest you. Welfare state. Used to be with Hugo Latimer. Get rid of him. But I'm just making him a cup of tea. Tim, I'm sorry. I think I have to call you back. Yes? Billy Dawson, the Gazette. Whatever you want, the answer's no comment. Look, I think there's been some mistake. I wrote this morning's piece. Hey, What piece? That's what I was trying to show you. This is not a good time, Mr Dawson. Mr. Brandt said you'd give me all the help I needed. He suggested we do a follow-up, day-to-day running of an up-and-coming yard. 
Let the readers feel they actually own a horse and everything that goes with it. You know, the sort of thing. Peaks and troughs. Oh, not again. That's all I need. Well, who was it? Welfare State. Had to be, didn't it? Uh, Rosie, um, we'll take that cup of tea now. Mr. Dawson, uh, won't you sit down? Thank you. It seems all right. Ah, the horse is grand. It's me that's half murdered. Oh. I've got a horse I can't find an owner for, a lad who keeps falling off the damn thing, and I've got a bloody journalist sniffing around the yard. Got something to hide? No. Then relax. Well? Just threw a wobbly, Governor. Are you all right? Just my ankle a bit, miss. You'll walk it off. Get in there, clean him up, and brush him off while the others are out with second lot. something special about that horse. I know. So why did Hugo get rid of him? Hugo Latimer doesn't need difficult horses. Let's face it, he's got plenty of good easy ones. How is he? Ownerless. Yes, well, I might be able to help. Change your mind? I told you I have no cash. Then how? Whatever he's up to, I don't like it. Danny! What did I just tell you? Get that boot on, get back in there and finish off Welfare State. Then you can clean out all the junk in that corner box by lunchtime, and I want to see you when you're done. Mr. Hardy! It's Patty Roman for you. She's seen the bit in the paper. Who? The singer! Never heard of her. My! She's brilliant! She wants to come and look round the yard. I bet you're a fiver. He won't be finished by lunchtime. There's no skiving off for him today, anyway. Oi! What are you playing at? Have you nothing better to do than stand about gawking while others work? You get your finger out the pair of I'll give you something to do. Get on with it! Oi, Trevor. Yeah? Do us a favour, will you? Yeah, of course. What do you want? Nick, come here. Crafty thing. Patty Roman say she was coming. Thursday. She said she might buy a horse and put it here. Well, first aid. <sighs> Let's impress her first and then try and persuade her to buy. That young man is a liability. Who? Danny. He nearly ran me over. He's meant to be seeing me. Sandwich? Uh, no, thank you. Uh, I had an early working lunch with Mr. Dawson and the editor of the Gazette. I think I found a solution to our little problem. Maybe I will have a sandwich. Welfare state? Yes, I've sold him to the gentleman with the green eye shades and the pencil behind his ear. This had better be good. The Daily Gazette will buy Welfare State for £38,500. You get £35,000 and we'll train him. What about the other £3,500? Commission. Well, a little petty cash to tide me over. Oh, it's only fair, don't you think? Why does a newspaper want to buy a horse? The paper is going to run a readership competition. First prize, own a racehorse for a year. A high-profile publicity gimmick for the Gazette. A kind of equine bingo. You are joking. They've already set the questions. 
The campaign will launch Thursday. If you agree, of course. I'm sorry, but no. Why not? It's a tabloid rag. I haven't forgotten what they did to us over Equaid. It's money. You won't get a better offer. You probably won't get another offer. Can you afford to throw 35 grand in their faces? I am not having the yard interfered with. 35,000 pounds. What would it involve? <laughs> Where's the red carpet? Hello. Mike Hardy. Hi, Mike Hardy. I'm Patty. Good early for you, Kath. He wants to make a good impression. Blacksmith's boy and dangerous lady. We have great hopes for Blacksmith's boy. Ah, now, this is Black Deed and Raw Silk. They're both mine as well. Black Deed is going to run at Sandown on Saturday. Maybe. He's still not right. He will run, Mike. You can't find anything wrong with him. Neither can the vet. So let's just sack it and see, shall we? What's wrong with Black Deed? Instinct? You know horses? A bit. So why isn't Mr. Brent taking your advice? A clash of wills. I don't care what Brandt says. I'm going to have Black Deed's blood count checked again. He won't thank you for it. <laughs> Does no, he ever... Th yeah? Oh, sorry. Was I interrupting? That's OK. You're not. Do you want to lift back? Yes, thank you. Francis? No, I'll go with John. Oh, I was interrupting. No, really. Hop in. We'll go up and check the string. All right. Useless. Stay, Stay here, Patty. <laughs> Danny, you okay? Yeah. Stay calm, everybody.
That's good. Good. They always fall for it. Easy. Well done. Sales. Sure. I'll call you. Okay. Bye. How about a photo call here, Patty? For my series of pieces. Yeah, if you'd like to read. Jack, it'll be all right. When were you thinking? Tomorrow morning? Before 10, Patty's a mosquito in the afternoon. Done. I'll call. Well. Steady, James. She hasn't even got a horse yet, let alone decided to put it here. Well, the publicity would do the yard good. The money would do the yard good. Work on it. Kath. <laughs> no, I'm serious. He actually wanted Patty to catch him. Well, hardly surprising when you think of it. <laughs> <laughs> well, sure, I remember a horse. And he used to hit men. Used to go for them. Well, you bite lumps out of you. Every time a new lad joined the yard, we'd send him into this horse for a bit of crack, you know. A sort of uh, initiation test. Aye, that's right. <laughs> anyway, one time we took on a new lass. We sent her in. Nothing. The horse was smiling at her. <laughs> Sweet as a cherry. We were rightly flummoxed, I can tell you. <laughs> she passed her initiation test, I tell you that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. What about Mo? Do you think she's ready? Experienced enough? Mm -hmm. Maybe not yet. Mouse standing? Now, there is a possibility. Yeah. Where's he off to now? Mm, God only knows. Good. Billy? Ooh. Oh, Sorry, what? Well. Will the Gazette stump up if we get Mouse standing to work ride welfare state? Why her? I think we've got a horse that doesn't like men. <laughs> well, it's not a bottomless pit. It's a good angle, though. So I can ring an ass? Sure. Standing. She got done for excess use of the whip, didn't she? What jockey hasn't? No, hang on a sec. Got to be a bit careful. My editor's got a thing about cruelty. You know, the British, they get more steamed up about ill-treated gerbils than the dive-bombing economy. <sighs> Mouse. Hello, it's Mike Hardy. Good, how are you? Great, look, I was uh, wondering, could you come and work a horse for me one day this week? No, any day. Tomorrow, tomorrow. Uh, sooner would be better, though. How are you fixed tomorrow morning? First lots at 7.30, could you manage that? Great. See you then. Thanks, Mouse. What's the rush? Mike, you're living in the age of the photo opportunity. You're living in it. I'm struggling with it. No, seriously, it'll look great. Just think. Patty, Mouse, a couple of girls from the Gazette and Welfare State. It'll do you good. Friend of the rich and famous, trainer to the stars. Of 23 degrees, a pleasant day ahead. <laughs> And apart from the usual roadworks, no problems at the moment, although traffic on the 8th of... Is he eating okay? Governor, he's eating every scrap. All right, let's have a look at it. Come on. Come on. Something's not right with him. You're not going to declare him? <sighs> no, I don't think I am. Walk him up. Thank you, Governor. Come on, Alton. It's your problem, Mike. So get on to it before this so-called paper ruins it for all of us. Soon to be divorced, Hardy, darling of the Daily Gazette and known to be a difficult character, was recently fined a mere £5,000 for doping one of his horses. He must have known that the horse would have been routinely tested, so the question must be asked, 
How did millionaire owner James Brandt, one of the winner all cost brigade, and Hardy, who are not the best of friends, think they would escape punishment? Put a sock on it, Nick. They haven't finished yet. I said that's enough. No, carry on, Nick. Go on. Um, think they would escape punishment unless they knew something of somebody that made it safe to cheat. Come on, boys. Play the game by the rules. I wonder where they got that from. They're scum. Eh, uh, you should know. Anyway, the Equade story is common knowledge. I'm not talking about that. I don't take kindly to personal slurs. I wonder who they spoke to. If somebody you know, Mike, doesn't like you very much. You're the journalist. You tell me. Well, you don't think I had anything to do with it, do you? Mike, everybody knows that the Argus and the Gazette are always at each other's throats. I know a good battle between you would do wonders for your circulation figures. Not guilty. You have my word. As a journalist. OK. Who is this Bix character, anyway? He doesn't exist. He's the Argos's little creation. They have a saying. If it's too hot for you, the byline is Bix. Entire editorial staff contributes. In this case, I would have thought it comes from Forsyth. Adam Forsyth. He passes for what they call their racing correspondent. Question is, what are we going to do about it? Just leave it. You can't stop it. It screws up your deal with Arkenfield. Why? Oh, if it's going to turn nasty, we can forget the whole thing. Mike, you pull out now and the Gazette will have you up to your armpits in lawyers. Look, there might be something I can do. All right? Here we are. Mouse. Morning, Mike. Morning. New BMW. You must be doing well. Being married to the champion jockey has its compensations. Yes. Billy Dawson. Ah, the news hound. Nice to meet you. How are you? Very well. You know each other? Billy rang last night. Something about a still shoot? Right, leave me to Dobbin then. You haven't told me what's wrong with him yet. Hey? Mike, I've been around trainers long enough to know that as a woman, I only get the ride on a horse if it's dodgy. Or if the trainer fancies me. And I'm not your type. <laughs> Who said? Yep. No, no dodge. He uh, just hates men. I know how you feel, old chap. Mo, Trevor, you wait here. Nick, you set the pace, OK? Right? Right, let's do it. Just because she's married to the champion, everyone thinks the sun shines out of her backside. You reckon you can do any better? Anyway, the governor wanted a woman to ride it. Mo, Trevor, off you go. Well? Don't you dare put anyone else on his back, ever. Really? That good? He's the best I've sat on, bar none. When's his first run? He runs at Sandown tomorrow. I'm riding one of Preston's in the first. You can ride this one in the third, then, can't you? Don't you dare drop me off. That's it. Breakfast? Yeah. Nick, hack him home. Give him the pick of some grass. All right, go ahead. 
I've got an idea, Danny. You should have a couple of melons down your front. At least that way they also like you. <laughs> Dokey girls, let's go. Don't get lost in the toilets now, girls. Billy, how you doing? I know. What do we have here? He's not going to like this. I think you're right. Mike, they're here. Please, tell me it's not going to be as bad as I think it is. Shall we get straight on with it? You're up, we can early. make introductions as we go. Mike! Not too far, please. Right. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Doug? Susie, what the hell is this? Uh, um. Morning. Right, this will do. As good a place as any. Mandy, not too far. Mind the makeup. Billy, there's a couple of saddles in this van. Get them, would you? Do I have to wear all this stuff? We just have to tone you down a bit, that's all. Oh, right. Sandy, Mandy, change places. Let's just even things up a bit here, will you? We've got saddles, Billy. Not shiny new ones. New ones? Okay, Pristine. Up, Lionel's latest up. buzzword. Right, Mandy, Sandy, get all of those saddles. Come along nicely, come on. Smile, girls, smile, let's have it. Right, horse. In, Patty and Mouse. Get all of the uh, things coming out of its mouth. One each, one each. Good, good. Nice. OK, girls, let's be having you. Can one of you lads give them a hand with these tops. Take them away. That's it. Very good. Let's have some smiles here. Come on. Happy, happy, happy. Let's have some smiles. Nice, nice. That's it. Just hold those poses. Hold it. That's good. That's good. Let's have a bit of happiness here. Yes, we're happening. Yes, good, good. And the horse. What the hell? I know, I know. They'll be done shortly. Isn't that mouse standing over there? And Patty again? Yes. Billy reckons we should uh, counter the Argos story with uh, positive publicity. Yes, nice good, to see good, you good. Again, Patty. And you, Mr. Brett. Uh, James, please. Uh, oh, Billy, now, what do you say to a few shots of me as patron and chief owner at Arkenfield, welcoming Patty and Mouse to the yard? A brilliant idea. Well, I think I should hold the horse, don't you? Yeah. Mm -hmm. All right. More smiles, more smiles, come on. That was a circus, a bloody circus. You think I'm happy about it? You should have cancelled it. The Gazette owns Welfare State. And I own most of the rest. Look, James, I am sorry about the stuff in the Argos this morning. You and me both. And as far as your horses are concerned, there is... Black Deed. ...is not right. We'll run on Saturday. And that's an end to it. Well? What? I'm going riding. On the bike. OK. Do you want to tell me? Not now. Black Deed runs. Yes, Gov. Comment? I can guess. He's a queer fish, that fellow. Yeah. I have a favour to ask. Yeah. Old school tie. If you like. Ask away. Lay off my cardi. Oh. 
You're writing for the wrong paper, Adam. It's dirty and it's unworthy of your talent. You flatter me. You're pulling a cheap stunt. They don't come much cheaper than your little tits and bums effort this morning. I would hate for your association with a certain warned-off bookmaker to come to the notice of the jockey club. Francis? You want it on a train here? Yeah. What? You tell me. It's all part of this rotten business, buttering up the rich and famous. She's just another owner. Okay. Go away. Papers have arrived. The idiot can wait a minute. Oh. <laughs> the uh, horse looks good. Yeah. What is it? It's Bix. Bloody hell. It seems that macho Mike Hardy sets more than horses racing. Since the bust up with wife Sally, Hardy has been seeing rather a lot of pretty neighbour Francis Ross, and he has recently been seen in the company of jockette Kathy Mouse Standing. <laughs> what does it say about Patty? You really want to know? You can paraphrase. It says you've been at it with her as well. Okay. Hi, Billy Dawson. Ah, uh, I haven't got a clue, Mike. For South must have gone back on his promise. No, you need to find out where he's getting it from. Well, it weren't me. Come on, Danny. You know Brandon and I have our disagreements. Yeah. You knew Patty Roman and Mrs. Standing were here. Yeah? Oh, I get it. It's because I made you look a right prat in front of everyone. You thought you'd get your own back by dishing the dirt to the nearest journalist. No! I don't believe you. That's your problem. You do yourself no good being cocky. You're going to blow it, Danny. If you keep your mouth shut, you're going to walk. I'm telling you. You open up, and I might just persuade the governor that you're worth keeping. I've got a job. Where? Newbury. Who with? Gino's. The wine bar? Why? I need the cash. Why do you think? Pack your bags. I ain't done nothing wrong. You're moonlighting. Only dinner times. All right. It's my bike. I'm behind with the payments. I've been washing up at Gino's to help. I'm still sacked. Oh, just get out, Danny. Who the hell is it? Is 
particularly careful, no loose talk, especially down the dog and gun. Right, back to work. Francis. I want to talk to you in private. It may come as a surprise to you, but I don't like having my private life spread all over the centre pages of the Argus. You're being oversensitive. Oversensitive? You thought it was a good idea involving the press. Oh, come on, Mike. My phone hasn't stopped ringing. Then take it off the hook. It's not funny. Who's laughing? Well, well, well. My lover and my rival. Caught in the egg. What's the matter? Is it something I said? What are you doing here? It's Saturday. Remember? Black Deed and Welfare State at Sandown. You want to be seen racing at Sandown after this? Look, if I had a horse for every time I was romantically linked with a bloke or one or two chicks, I'd have a larger string than all the Mactoons put together. They're grubby little people with grubby little minds. Step up it. Now let's go racing. Number 10 by T. Oliver. And number 11 is written by R. Steele. So number 11 is for the first race this afternoon. The 10 last stakes of the 5 furlongs. The post time of 2.30. And over the following week notices for the first race. Good afternoon, everyone. How are you all? Uh, surviving. Where's James? He's embarrassed, Mike. Embarrassed? Why? Yeah, look, Kath, I've just got to go and see Billy and check in the horses. Look after the girls, will you? It's despicable, and you know it. You said yourself I write for a despicable paper. Forsyth, you gave me your word. And I kept it. Of course. Recall the old school motto, Billy. I didn't write Bix this morning. Hardy. You've got some powerful enemies. I suggest you look closer to home. Thanks a bunch of mate. All right, off you go, John. Mike, my editor's here. I'd like to have a word with you if you've got a moment. Sure, in the stands just before the offer, okay, Billy? Great. John? Have him handy. Go for home two out. If he fades, don't be hard on him. Push him out, hands and heels. And don't hit him, OK? And the last ones to go to post for the seventh furlong race are Wizard Lizard, number five, orange and black stripes, Green Steve Cash, and ridden by Stan Thomas. And then Pete Arnold with number six, Cap Noise, Dark Blue, Red Steve, and Port the Cap. And finally, the only Philly has Carlyle Slot. Those black deeds. Number one, wearing yellow and black. He runs after all. Mike? Yeah. I'd like to be my editor. This is David Fox. David, this is Mike Hardy, our trainer. Hello, nice to finally meet you. And you. Mike. Sorry, oh. please excuse me, everyone. C can we have a word? Uh, it is important. Sure. Ladies, gentlemen, excuse me. Billy, introduce the girls. Sure. Please. David, this is our American guest, oh. Patty Roman, oh. and oh. Francis Ross, oh. David Fox. Nice to meet you. Well? I found your mole. More of a rat, really. Who? Just didn't think after everything that's happened. It wasn't as if it was being malicious. Just stupid. Sometimes I really wonder what I married. James? Mm. Uh, why? It was a bloody stupid mistake. A man phoned, said he was from the Gazette and wanted background on Patty and Francis for Billy's pieces. It won't happen again. I am sorry, Mike. Mike, he's jumped off okay. <sighs> sorry about that. Well, your horse goes in the next. I think we've ironed out his problem. He should stand a good chance. Putting Mouse up will stand us in good stead. She's a good jockey. I think we'll stick with her. He's going on. Let's face it, so far she's the only one who can handle the horse. <laughs> Come on. 
Come on. a blood vessel. Nothing you can do. It's bad news, Mitt. Go. Blood vessel, Governor. What the hell do you think you're playing at? This horse may never race again. I told you in the paddock not to hit him. Oh. What did he offer you? Holiday in Tenerife, was it? Well, I only hope it's worth the ban you're going to get for excessive use. Now, go and weigh in. Now what? Your newspaper friends. Oh, no, you don't. You started all this. They're your friends, not mine. If I had my way, they'd all be singing in high voices. May I quote you on that, Mr Hardy? Mike! Can we have a reaction? To what? to the fact that the Daily Gazette has decided to move Welfare State from your yard to Hugo Latimer. You're joking. Do you want to comment? I've got nothing to say. Yes, but is it true, though? I told you I've got nothing to say. Billy? What the hell's going on? Mike, I'm sorry. Yeah, I bet you are. It's a matter of image, Mr Hardy. The Gazette can't afford to be seen to be condoning such treatment of our horse. I had nothing to do with that. That's immaterial. The public will assume he wrote to your instructions and they'll see it as blatant cruelty. Mike, I tried to warn you. I told that bloody tick not to hit him. You heard me. You were there. I feel, all in all, it would be better for the horse to return to Latimer's yard. I'm sorry. Are you about to tell me that loyalty is a product of a bygone era? It's my job on the line. Et tu, Brute. They're not worth it. Who? Journalists, editors, or hacks, they're all the same. Yeah, well, the press I can live with. Losing a good horse like Welfare State, that hurts. Now that we can do something about. Can we? Got to find me a horse, haven't we? So? How about tomorrow? Why not? Good. Oh, and Patty, can you make it first thing? All right. No point hanging about, is there? Down to the last quarter of category for the champion jockey go on. From Metal Song, with Welfare State making ground and Lower Nord closing up as well. The other three have beaten a furlong left, and Mouse Standing produces Welfare State for his effort. Welfare State category, they're fighting it out. Nothing more. Welfare State.
Премьер-министр, как насчет фона и обстановки? Россия не Да. 